three astronauts go to space and four rockets launch, now on KNews. Hi, Lucas here. Welcome to KNews for week 50 and as always a big shout out to my KNews boosters on Patreon. Thanks for your trust. But before I come to the launches, I want to announce some changes to KNews. I used to try push out one video per week covering all the launches in great detail, which to be honest is too much. I try to be fair and treat all payloads and rockets the same, but even I have to say communication satellite number 105 is just not as exciting to talk about as maybe some other payload, even though every rocket launch is cool to watch. So I decided to pick out one topic per week which I will put my heart and soul into while only mentioning all the upcoming launches briefly in the beginning. Now this is all not set in stone and I will listen to your feedback on that carefully to make some adjustments. The topic I focus on could be a particular launch but it could also be something else like a special episode. My main goal is to release one episode per week consistently which I still fail to deliver very often. Anyways let's get started. Launching this week are Rocket Lab's Electron, SpaceX Falcon 9, Ariane 5 and a Soyuz. Three of them might actually launch on the same day. First up is Electron which has a rather loose schedule. It could launch any day of the week at 1.30 UTC from the Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. The main constraint is the weather I believe. Up top are four CubeSats, two of each from type Flock 2 and Lemur 2. All these are equipped with cameras to take pictures from the ground below and are part of a large CubeSat constellation belonging to the companies Planet Labs and Spire Global. Next is a SpaceX Falcon 9 with an inaugural flight from Space Launch Complex 40 on Tuesday at 16.46 UTC. The launch pad was broken due to a Falcon 9 exploding last year but it's back. This means the other launch pad 39 can be finally changed to support Falcon Heavy. Up top Falcon 9 is a Dragon 1 spacecraft filled with cargo for the International Space Station. To get there it will be shut into a low earth orbit inclined at 51.6 degrees. The same one the ISS is orbiting at but of course just a little lower to catch up with it. A special thing to mention here is the booster and the capsule are both flight proven as SpaceX is referring to the reused hardware. The turnaround time is still very high but Block 5, the final iteration of Falcon 9 is not yet flying. The final version will include a lot of changes which make reusing the booster easier to finally step up the relaunch game to ultimately increase the launch cadence. Number 3 on the list is an Ariane 5 hopefully causing a rumble in the jungle on Tuesday as well at 18.36 UTC in Kourou French Guiana. Up top are two Galileo navigation satellites which will be shot into a 56 degrees inclined orbit. Their destination is one of three medium earth orbital planes with an altitude of round about 22,000 km. The navigation constellation is not yet finished and Ariane Space will continue to build it up for the European Union to be a little more independent from the US GPS and Russia's GLONASS which are quite similar. The last launch this week aims for the International Space Station as well but that one is filled with astronauts so I will of course feature it in greater detail. It's a Soyuz rocket currently scheduled to lift off on Sunday at 7.21 UTC from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. Up top of the Soyuz rocket is the Soyuz spacecraft hiding behind a tight fairing. The pointy tower up top is the escape system which is basically a solid fuel booster firing its engines to the sides should something go wrong. It can separate the crew from the rocket in the early stages of flight. However it will be staged away at some point once the rocket is in space to get rid of the weight since the spacecraft could separate from the rocket on its own should its engine fail. The escape system is also only designed for an inatmospheric abort using grid fins to steer it at high speeds. Grid fins do not work in space and an abort so late into the mission could cause the capsule to tumble and spin out of control. This would be then of course very dangerous and life threatening for the astronauts on board. As mentioned Soyuz will launch from Baikonur and head northeast to follow an inclination of 51.6 degrees. As it speeds into the sky its flight computer will do most of the work and drop its empty stages on the way up. Since these empty tanks drop on ground, Roscosmos actually has a ground crew to locate the crash sites and return the boosters. I'm not sure what they do with them but I guess there are some valuable materials on the rocket which could be recycled into new ones. However, that's just my speculation. 
As the rocket heads up in the background, let me introduce to you the astronauts joining Expedition 54 on the ISS. For Russia there is Anton Shkabelev. He's 45 years old and was born in Ukraine. His career started as a Russian Air Force pilot and he later on graduated in Air Force Engineering. So far Anton has spent a year in space and by a year I really mean 365 days to be precise. <clears throat> he was twice on board the station already, once in 2012 and once in 2014. Next up is Kanai Norishige from Japan. He turns 41 this month and is a military doctor who did specialize in surgery I think. He later transferred to the Japan Self Defense Force Hospital in Kure which lies in the Hiroshima district of Japan. There he became a diving medical officer after he has qualified himself as a diver in the US Navy. This would be his first flight to space where his diving experience could really pay off but I'm not sure if he will participate in any extravehicular activity. And finally on board is also a US astronaut namely Scott Manley, uh, I mean Scott Tingle. He is 52 years old and was born in Attleboro, Massachusetts. This has got to be one of the hardest to pronounce English words, holy moly, Massachusetts. Anyways, Scott's career is also dominated by military service as most astronauts. He is a commander in the US Navy and a test pilot. This will be his first mission to space as well after he is qualified as an astronaut in 2011. I wish these brave astronauts all the best luck on their ride to the station and of course also a nice Christmas and New Year's Eve they will share with the other crew members awaiting their arrival on the station. Ok, that shall conclude this weeks episode and I hope to see you next one if you like. This show is mainly supported by crowdfunding so please consider to become a KNews booster if you can spare a dollar or two. I'm currently saving for better hardware to render all those animations you see more quickly. Again, big thanks to all who have supported me so far. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.